went through there sort of prepare you for the roller coaster that you were about to get on with with this season and and sort of if you applied any of it I mean I mean it's well chronicled obviously you guys have been really good the last 50 games and you were struggling the first 50 for a lot of reasons how much did going through those situations there help you help you out at the start of this year yeah I've stated quite a, a number of times how beneficial it was to get out of San Antonio and kind of get back to the real NBA and um you know, I think seven years in San Antonio and foundation and the base of who I am as a coach and who I was as a player was beneficial. But to leave for those two years was probably just as much or if not uh, more invaluable uh, for my preparation to be a head coach uh, due to a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, some situations, obviously, in Philadelphia with uh, winning on the line and getting fired after that. Um, Brooklyn, an intense situation with the win now mentality and some superstar players. And I think all that voted well for me going forward um, you know, like I said it's, San Antonio is a little bit of uh, fairy tale boy scouts and you know, do whatever you ask and I need to get back to the real side of the NBA that I was in as a player and I think that helped me navigate some of the things earlier this year Dan hey, Dan Wicke with the Los Angeles Times um, your first taste of the NBA came with the Lakers and for a, a 10 day deal I'm curious you, you just mentioned San Antonio was the, the foundation of who you were as a player, but what, how did that, what do you remember about that 10 day span, that first real taste of this league? How, how did that kind of inform the rest of your career? Yeah, I had a really good training camp in Hawaii the year when Peyton and, and Malone came and uh, was, I think, the last cut to some veteran guys, Brian Russell and some of those guys they brought along. And um, so I was confident in what I did there. Uh, Kobe's shoulder popped out and they called me up and got on a red eye to play against Denver. Um, but in the first game and even in that 10 day, I played well enough to probably stick and I hear that was a plan. So it, it kind of just boosted my confidence. Uh, we had some injuries to bigs and they had to replace some bigs and kinda, I was a casualty of that. But it just more so than anything uh, built up my confidence of what I had been doing in preparation to play in the league and kind of give me that fire to get back there. And so. Um, LA's always been a special place to me, uh, being from the West Coast, being from Portland originally, and the first place I played and first taste of the NBA, and kind of, like I said, motivated me and drove me to get back. Well, to, to be at this point now, and obviously there's more for you to do and the job isn't done, but that it could have started just with like a 10 day thing. Um, did you ever think about like if those 10 days had gone differently, like how maybe things could have been different? No, I don't. I never look at it like that. Um, you know, I figure whatever route I've taken, it was going to start somewhere. That was my belief in myself. And so if it was in L.A., it would have been somewhere else. I had a few uh, call-ups that fell through on the way, so I was very close for a while. And uh, even going back to my Portland stint, what kind of kick-started me in the league full-time. Um, you know, there were ups and downs along the way. And if not for that situation, I was going to kick the door down at some point regardless. Back left. Chelsea McDonald with WHDH in Boston. You know, so much has been said about experience coming into the NBA Finals. The Warriors are making their sixth Finals appearance since in the past eight seasons, while no one, no player on your team has um, competed on this stage. How much does experience really matter once you compete in the NBA Finals, though? I think once you get out of the initial uh, media circus and the intensity and how everything is much more exaggerated, obviously it's not much different when you get on the court. Uh, we have guys that have that are young, but have been through a few Eastern Conference Finals already, and then our path this year, you know, two Game Sevens and um, playing some high-level teams and taking a tough route. I think that's prepared us more than anything. I coached in two Finals, uh, my first two years in the league, got to Western Conference Final as a player myself, and then we've had other coaches who have been through it, and, you know, and won championships as well. And so, we can kind of give our advice on what's to come. But uh, once we get out there, I think what's really been good about our group is. And not caught up in the, the moment, uh, the game sevens, uh, playing on the road. You see our record, and for more so than anything, it's just basketball. At the end of the day, that's what we try to stress, and I think uh, that's the benefit of our group being so young and approaching it that way. Jeff, in the middle. Jeff Zilgit, USA Today. Ime, when you interviewed uh, for the job, what were the conversations with Brad like? And m maybe as you are here today, w what are some of the important aspects of your relationship with Brad that you know allowed some of this to happen? More so than anything, it wasn't about, uh, you know, obviously you talk about the expectations and the standard of the organization, but really basketball philosophy and where we wanted to go as an organization and 
the way I thought the game on both ends, the way I uh, related to people was a big part of it and how we could push the group forward. And so uh, very natural in the, in the interview process, the original Zooms and then in person uh, with Brad, we kind of hit it off from the get-go and thought the same way. And so you know, we obviously felt comfortable and there were some benefits of working with somebody who feels the same way. And so uh, with him, it's been great. Uh, d- different situation. Uh, a lot of people may not think is appealing, but I think it's, it's only a benefit to have a guy that's coached for seven, eight years in the building with the same guys down the hall, you know, talk about every situation he's been through and, and kind of lend his support as far as that, but also step back and let, let me do my thing. And so um, I think it's only been an added benefit and in a unique situation. It's, it's helped out this year for sure. Joe here in the second row. Hey, man. I heard what you said yesterday about Smart and Williams, but how do you plan on listing them? for tomorrow's game and then with Mar- assuming Marcus is questionable tomorrow does he have a chance to play his way off the injury report or is this an injury that is going to slow him down for the for the whole series no Marcus is different than than Rob uh, you know it's a sprained ankle and once the swelling goes down and the pain goes down uh, that can obviously improve his situation as far as that Rob's a little different coming off the surgery and uh, the amount of games we played uh, in that 17 games 17 day span uh, every other day and the toll it took just naturally besides the bone bruise he took against uh, at the Tacompo so his will be listed as day to day the rest of the way how he reacts on it and we've kept his minutes lower in the last few games against Miami and his availability has been up and down based on that game and so he is a true day to day situation where Marcus is uh, specifically a rolled ankle that'll get better as time goes they are both yes Melissa, right here. Hey, May. Melissa Roland, Fox Sports. Um, you talked about your time in San Antonio. I'm curious, have you been in touch with Pop at all? And if so, what advice has he given you? We haven't talked uh, yet. We text and I missed him on the call. He left me a voicemail on the plane yesterday, but I know he's watching through other people letting me know. And, um, and I've said it this year, uh, as an assistant with him, I saw how he was bothered throughout the playoffs so for years by other assistants that left. And I said I was never going to be the guy to do that. And so haven't really talked to him much other than we played him and had some dinners this year. And uh, I know he's watching. Left a nice voicemail after we made it. And we'll talk at some point. But um, he, he has helped me throughout my career. And he understands what the situation is being through it so many times himself that he's pretty similar to me as far as that, not trying to bother anybody. And so uh, I know he's supporting. And I've heard through other people. and. We'll talk at some point. On your left? He may, you, you've kind of talked about the different styles of leadership on this roster, but Marcus specifically, he starts the year kind of calling out Jason Jalen for their playmaking. January, he has a moment where he's telling everybody he loves him. It feels like he's kind of been trying to find that sweet spot of, you know, tough love or, you know, going a little easier on guys. And, you know, you've kind of gone through the same thing here, I'm sure. What has just been that process like of smart, but really everybody finding the harder way to do things leadership wise or maybe the more you know soft hand well the guys are who they are and marcus is emotional as a player and the things he says and the way he plays and wears it on his on the sleeve so he may go about it uh, a different way than others but he is who he is and we encourage guys to speak up and the thing about the chicago game was that nothing said publicly had has had not been said privately and so Although it may rub some people wrong because it was said publicly, it was something that we were working on uh, behind the scenes every day in film sessions, one-on-one sessions, and uh, we all understood the areas we needed to improve. So um, that was what it was, and we moved past that pretty quickly. But um, Marcus, as well as the others, uh, their leadership and uh, being vocal has been invaluable to the group. Uh, the, him and Al are the more vocal too, but Jason and Jalen have really grown in that area and do it their own way. And so uh, we love them for who they are and let them be who they are. And I think that mix of leadership and different styles uh, benefits our team. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.